Hello, Ender Sword here again, this time with a video on Star Trek Fleet Command. It is the first day of the new Picard arc. I think it's called Legacy. Um, and I wanted to talk about the hostels in the Exborg space. Uh, the new hostels just added. It's near the Eclipse and regular Borg, I guess, over here. Um, and why they're different, a fair bit different than some of the other ones uh, hostels that you've seen in the past and how you could potentially use that to really go and hit above your weight and kill things a lot higher than you usually can um, which can help out with things like these combat training missions if you really want to push into that a lot of those give uh, the recruit tokens and a lot of dilithium so it's kind of a good opportunity to move that up especially since some of the events this month are actually based on uh, getting officer shards and, and things like that and catching up in officers and whatever it kind of goes hand in hand so wanted to talk quickly about kind of the old way uh, that hostels used to work uh, prior to the Dominion, uh, which was anything that you wanted that was like level 51 and above, you had to go to like this level 50 plus deep space, which is quite out there in terms of warp range. Uh, 255 to get to this level 52 to 54 system. Uh, to get above 51 at all, you were looking at like warps of like 230, 230. Uh, to get out there. So if you wanted anything above 51, you pretty much had to get out there and that was very hard to do unless you had a very tiered up uh, levels 40 something ship uh, to get there. My own Pelham, which is uh, level 40, tier eight, can't even get out there unless I load up uh, like Cadet Scotty and Grush and things like that onto it. Uh, in which case then you can't really fight out there because you don't have the right crew. So very hard to do that uh, before they added the Dominion space on top of it. This doesn't have the same sort of level restriction to it. You can easily get into like this level 53 to 54, 55 space uh, without running into those restrictions. You can even get up to level 60 here, though you won't be able to kill anything in it unless you're very, very high. Uh, but a warp range of only 150 is certainly something that's accessible to uh, most people in their mid 40s. So the warp range is not really an issue at all in terms of getting there, but you still have to deal with the fact that you have to kill these things and they are pretty tough. So that was the thing that was limiting what you could kill or not is literally whether you could kill it, not just whether you could fly there anymore. Um, so up until today, the highest level thing that I could kill with this Pelham, uh, was, which is my best ship, was a level 53. So I could kill a level 53 battleship. I could push into a level 54 if I used something like a Cerritos buff, but that was about the limit to it. And I attacked one a little earlier so that I would have a battle log for it. So we're just going to take a look at this ship and then compare it to the new Exborg stuff to see what the difference really is uh, between the two. The damage per round on this Jem'Hadar battleship is 25 million. The armor piercing uh, accuracy shield piercing range from about a million to 1.5 million on it and critical chance 10%. If we look at the actual battle log itself, you can see that it killed me in about 11 rounds. It was fairly close. Um, it had only a fraction of hull health left, but it was consistently about that, um, about that same amount. What it was doing was about 1.1 million for, I guess, the energy weapons. And then as you get into the kinetics, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7 million, uh, none of those with crits. Uh, and then obviously higher if it does crit. So basically what was happening each round, I was taking about 36,000 damage to the hull, the rest of that being mitigated, eventually it's gonna break through your shields and that's gonna go right to the hull. If we compare that, however, to a similar leveled thing in the Exborg space, which are now called Freebooters. Um, I haven't watched the latest season of Picard, but I guess that's a thing. Um, I gotta catch up tonight. Uh, Basically, these are doing a lot less damage. So instead of 25 million per round, we're getting under 3 million per round, 2.9 million per round. The piercing stats are only 200,000, 200,000, 280,000 in that ballpark. However, um, 
to make it relatively equal, and I don't know why they did it this way, but it has a buff on it that says it has 500% to all their piercing stats. So in reality, that equates to about the same thing. Uh, 200,000 plus that 500% is still uh, in the ballpark of a million for these. The critical chance is a little bit lower uh, on these, but the rest of it, uh, you know, relatively equals out the big big difference is the damage now if we look there and it only flashes for a second as i pull it up 624 million is the hull health um, on this but on the gem hadar ship 52 million is the hull health to begin with so over 10 times the amount of hull health is actually there now the shield health is not the same uh, the shield health on this Jem'Hadar battleship was uh, 39 million, uh, but was actually less than that on the new freebooter here, starting at only 12 million. So a lot of hostels you see are relatively equal in terms of their shield versus hull. Uh, in this case, that's not the case at all. You are very quickly blowing through the shields of this thing uh, to get direct to the hull, but the hull is absolutely massive compared to most hostels of the uh, of the same level um, and the way that that plays out ultimately in the battle log is just that you last a long long time that this fight against it was 58 rounds long but you can see that the damage per shot taken is considerably less instead of getting 1.1 million per shot we're getting 185 158 182 getting as high as just above 200,000 um, for the same level of combatant. And what that ultimately means is what's going to my hull is instead of that 36 type thousand, we're getting under 6,000, 59, 58, 55, 6,300, and so on. Where this breaks through is because it's such a long fight, where it's going to do a lot of damage to my hull is when it eventually gets to the point that obviously it's taken my shields down. And at that point is where you're going to get most of the damage uh, that's actually been suffered in combat. So you're doing a really, really good job of mitigating up to that point. And I'm going to have to go down to, it's probably going to be around round 40 or something uh, on this. Looking for when the shield starts to be zero. 38, 39, 40, yeah, 40. So level 40, my shields start to deplete. And now instead of taking 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, I'm taking 67, 68, um, much higher amounts to my hull. And that's obviously a cracking into me. What I've got for the crew here, since I didn't mention it yet, is you're going to use whatever your ship type is and then go against the battle triangle. Uh, so in this case, I'm an interceptor against battleships. I'm gonna use Strange New World Pike, Strange New World Uhura, and then Khan, particularly since it's a long fight, Khan is gonna be great because you're just quickly gonna get to a point that you're doing 100% criticals uh, against it, which is gonna really help you get down that massive hull a lot quicker. But you can see since my uh, shield zeroed out, it was able to take about half the hull uh, away before I was able to kill it. So what you want to find is a sweet spot for yourself where you're essentially just barely killing them uh, without depleting your shields entirely. So that point for me was right at about level 52, uh, that it was taking about a third of my shields down. I was doing 17 rounds of combat. It was not getting into uh, my hull or getting through the shields directly to the hull before I was able to kill it. I'm right on the border of at level 53, um, and this is probably give or take. It would happen in some fights, not others. But out of 51 rounds, it took to the 49th round to get through the shields. But it actually does so much damage in the next two rounds that it's still not worth doing this one. So probably after the next round of like upgrades or next shield boost or something, then this is the area that I could be in. And doing the 53s for my longer term grind is something that I can survive. So wanted to discuss that as the traditional crew, but there is something that they released last month that helps you get away from the traditional crew and really, really exploit the hell out of these things and how they work. And that is this weird looking dude. Uh, this is Tall, and they just re-released him last month. 
And I don't know whether Scopely intended this to happen or whether it's just another case where they didn't see the potential of their own officer uh, again with the new content that they were going to come out with. So it's either very clever that they have sold something that's now going to be incredibly valuable or it's another case where they had a complete oversight and didn't realize that an officer like Gala completely defeated their Cardassian Armadas or whether where changing Kira was completely bugging out a lot of like Eclipse Armadas or some of the PvP strike teams cause weird glitches of the other ship doing zero damage when it crits, things like that. It often feels like Scopely doesn't test these interactions out or think them out. But in this case, where they just released them last month, I kind of bet that they did. And you're probably going to see this guy go on sale again this month. I did pick him up uh, last time just because I had a feeling that this sort of thing was going to happen. So what Tall does is when the enemy ship is burning, he removes uh, a percentage of their hull. I believe 5% is the default, uh, 6% the next level, 7 so on. Uh, but you can do them at the default level. There's no problem with that. Uh, he basically just deletes. It doesn't even actually get recorded as damage. It is just deleted from their hull completely. Um, so Nero here, or uh, Giorgio, can provide the burning for you. Uh, in this case, my Giorgio, or whatever you pronounce that, is only level five, so my Nero is fine and has better stats, so I use him. And then five of 11 is going to be my captain to provide the mitigation that I need to just survive the length of uh, fight that I'm gonna be in. And then he is ultimately gonna do all the burning damage. So we're gonna jump to the system that I'm in here. And now I don't really care too much uh, what the ship types matchups are going to be. So like I said, the previous I was able to do before was a level uh, 53. I'm now going to go after a level 57 battleship with almost a billion hull and see how we do. And we have killed it. And we've killed it with about about half the hull left. So I can make progress towards this mission uh, just by using that. If we look at the battle log for this, you can kind of see what happens here. It looks as if this was already damaged. It wasn't, it was at full health, but Tall literally just deletes 6% uh, of the hull since it mines at level 10, 5% if it's at the base level. Um, and it just kind of takes it off. So as long as he is burning, as Nero provides, then he's going to simply delete that hull. The rest was damage done by your weapons. If we look at the battle log, it lasted for 17 rounds. Again, it's doing a fairly moderate amount of damage. So all I have to do is survive long enough to get through um, his deletion of that hull. You can see because I've only got five for mitigation and these are fairly high level, I'm not mitigating the full 71%, it's actually nowhere near it. So I am taking a fair bit to the hull. You could increase that by uh, really stacking the health on the lower decks uh, to try and boost that uh, as high as you can. But uh, basically whatever the maximum you could do is, you know, is gonna be considerably higher than what you were able to do before. Uh, so I'll grab another, see if I can survive two uh, in a row. I bet I can do this for the 58s as well. I don't know quite how high I can go, but if you're unaware of this tactic, there it is. Um, so if you don't have them, you can use those Strange New World Pike crews. Or, of course, if you're well below uh, 50, you know, in your low 40s, you can still just use Pike Moreau Chen. That's going to work out still relatively well um, over it. Um, but you may want to look at adjusting some of that a bit to look at what is the crew that I can do that maximizes long-term damage while minimizing me losing my shields, uh, basically, at the end of it. It's a different type of fight than you usually have because it's only trickling in small amounts of damage to you 
and it's really about keeping your shields up uh, more than anything. Uh, so I was able to get two in a row there. I'll die to this one uh, and then probably go back and see how high it could do. But wanted to talk about that, tip people off. If Tal does go on sale or in some event this week, they're probably going to try and sell it, let's be honest. You don't need a high level of them, but it might be worth it to unlock uh, the lowest level to be able to do this. It seems like it's going to be a really important part of the grind uh, going forward, and uh, it's a good opportunity to really push the maximum of what you can do. And also, it's going to make it so that you're not having to fight only your crew matchup of like Interceptor versus Battleship on the Battle Triangle. You'll be able to load that crew up, go in there, and just kill whichever ones you want and it'll be fine. If you're not aware as well, this also works on the Actian systems um, that you can basically go after these fellas with a normal ship instead of bringing your Mantis in here anymore. You can basically just bring in the largest cargo ship you have, load it up with five Nero and Tall or five Burning Officer and Tall, and go after these they have very similar properties where they do relatively low damage for what they are it's just that they have huge amounts of uh shield and hull but literally their size doesn't matter anymore this could be 200 billion this could be 200 trillion doesn't make any difference because tall will still kill it in about 20 rounds so that's something to to look at you're going to probably have a higher cargo on ships other than your mantis just bring it in. You can see that's what this person uh, is likely doing. Yeah, there's their setup. That's exactly what they're doing uh, in order to be able to get stuff. So something to work in. Take it for what it is. Have a nice uh, arc. Talk to you later.